Hello everyone, good evening, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Together uh, we are hosting Powell from Microsoft. Uh, Powell is also ex-Microsoft MVP. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Salil. I'm also Microsoft Data Platform MVP specialized in Power BI. I'm so happy to discuss other synapse together with Powell. Uh, Powell will take us through the steps of how can we leverage Power BI with uh, Azure and the, the other related good stuff. I'll keep everything short. Thanks a lot for joining us, Paul. It's a pleasure to host you. Please take over, introduce yourself and teach us. Mm -hmm. OK, um, teaching is maybe uh, is maybe a large word for this because we have one hour, so teaching in one hour. <laughs> I I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, for sure I will try to inspire and uh, and, and 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 then share some call to actions um, with you, so you could proceed and and uh, and maybe uh, maybe do some some learning on your own. So um, okay, let me just let me just know if you see the screen. That's number one. I will try to to observe the chat window. I'm not sure there is, should should I op, should I open the Q and A or chat yeah, is I, better. I will I will check the chat window for you. Uh -huh. There is a question. I'll okay. Interrupt. Okay. So let's let let's just go and uh, I, I I I will ask Khalil to to moderate and and if the question appears, just let me know. So as as Khalil mentioned, um. I'm a Microsoft employee uh, working uh, as a part of uh, Synapse Analytics team. Um, I'm a program manager uh, managing and engaging community. So a part of my job is uh, actually uh, getting involved in meetups, events, and uh, you know, a kind of advocacy. And I'm not I'm, I'm not going to say evangelization. <laughs> Uh, rather, uh, making people curious about uh, how to play with our uh, services for analytics, Synapse, and Power BI specifically. But there are more, of course. I used to be an MVP, as Halil mentioned, on a SQL Server in the past and Data Platform later on. So my story of Microsoft products is um, quite long, I would say over 20 years. Uh, I used to be SQL, pro SQL developer and administrator, then I moved to the analytics uh, side uh, like 12 years ago, and I'm here. I mean, I, right now analytics is, is basically uh, all I've been doing since, 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 since I switched from uh, SQL developer and administrator. So today's session, Power BI plus Azure Synapse Analytics better together. Uh, the purpose of this session is to uh, to address the needs of Power BI people, uh, so it will be a bit skewed toward uh, towards Synapse because I will I will mostly cover Synapse and then elaborate on how you can use the and benefit from having Synapse and and deployment um, of Synapse for Power from Power BI perspective. Um, now. You might you might uh, want to connect with me on different social media, so feel free to jump in and and connect with me on on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, on LinkedIn, you can find as well my newsletter on uh, Azure Data and Power BI News. The link is provided in the chat window, so feel free to subscribe. Let me know if if there is something I can put in this in this newsletter. Um, okay, I will start with uh, I would say stating what's what's the purpose of having unified analytics because that's that's all that's what it's all about the problems we have right now uh, have evolved uh, since i would say last few decades like 20 years ago the problems were quite different right now the problems are like this first how can i discover what data i have in my organization it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you sit on the Power BI side as, as data analyst or you're you're playing as a data engineer with big data Azure services. The, the, this is the challenge. Next, how I can make my data trustworthy? So, how can I make that my reports present data that are trusted and and present the reality of my business? Next, democratization of data. So. 
how can I make people who search and look for for data that can be easily accessed and consumed um, to be able to access the data they need and to, to, to make to make the business decisions? Then, how can I make this data available fast? So if I get some new data, how can I make it available in a matter of of weeks or maybe days or maybe even hours rather than months and some heavy deployments like we did in the past. And then there is a solid part of security and compliance things. So how can I make sure that my data stored within analytical platforms uh, is secure and uh, meets the meet the, meets the compliance uh, the compliance requirements? So that's that's actually why Microsoft because this involves many systems. This involves not just analytics, but also uh, data governance systems like Microsoft Purview, Purview platform in, in Azure, um, like operational databases. This this involves all the all those platforms. So because of that, because of this this interoperability of different platforms, we introduced Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, and uh, I wanted to highlight that. This this may be a bit confusing for customers and for you as well. Uh, what actually this uh, Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform is. So to make the long story short, if you know what Power Platform is, and I'm sure you know, it's a it's a kind of umbrella covering different products for um, for citizen developers and and people uh, who work on the you know business side, productivity side. So Power BI, Power Plat Power Platform, uh, sorry Power. Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate, that's that's the majority of, of Power Platform. So you may treat Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform just like Power Platform, but for services that are uh, that are that that they that are used for managing data, not just analytics, but also for storing data, uh, transactional data like databases. A good example is that we have SQL Server as a part of this of this, let's say bucket of uh, of services for for data processing now um okay so it's nice microsoft collected all the services into one bucket uh, what what comes out of it so the the outcomes are that those services microsoft will be or is working on uh, integrating those services more and more so over time you will see the, there are some examples I, I will provide in a second but over time you will see that those services are tighter integrated, it's easier to, to switch from one to another, or even it's quite transparent to run, to switch from operational uh, databases to analytics in a matter of, as I, as I mentioned, we, having the speed of, of uh, deployment, so in, in days uh, instead of months. So good examples of uh, where this integration shows up today uh, are things like, for example, um, being able to uh, replicate SQL Server database to uh, Azure SQL databases, having, for example, replicas in SQL Manage instance, or uh, connect, connecting to uh, Azure Cosmos DB operational store with Azure Synapse Analytics, just like we would uh, reach, reach to the uh, database that is within uh, Synapse platform. The other example, having Power BI data maps, which involves in the backend Azure SQL database, is a great example of how we can uh, benefit from having different different services that actually can be can be can quickly become a part of another platform that falls into the same bucket. Okay, having said that, let's let's uh, let's make sure we know why we do analytics and what are the steps of analytics in in the organization. Because the, the requirement we have for unified analytics is to make sure that the organization can become mature in analytics. What does it mean to become mature? Become it, it, it means that I will the organization will take next steps for analytics. It will start from an analytics of historical data. So what happened and probably why did it happen? In and if I if I draw a line here. Um, this is probably where I would say historically data warehousing uh, had its place. So classical data warehouses were for the purpose of uh, historical analysis. And of course, you could you could take some uh, decisions and and uh, and uh, so bring some insights based on that. But now 
The things are even more complex because we want to go further. We want to predict what, what will happen in the future and also make decisions that will drive something that will happen that will happen and also take actions based on the insights. So prescriptive analytics is something that is uh, the next step of an for analytics. So once I have my insights and I have my my uh, analytics in place, it would be great if this launches and triggers some action in the organization, right? So the purpose of today's modern analytical platform is to make sure that the company is getting getting higher and getting more mature with analytics. Now, this this picture displays how we how we actually do analytics even today because it it, it, it it's evolving yet. Uh, in the on-premises, uh, in the on-premises world, it, it looked very much like that. So there is a process. Like first, what I need to do is to bring my data coming from different data sources, on-premises, cloud, some business applications, software as a service, and I have to ingest the data. By ingesting, I, I mean, um, is it is it just Michael who lost the screenshot? Screenshot? I think so. I'm I'm I'm. I have no issues with the. I will. Screen. I will do the following. My my network can be crappy. That's that's my that's more, maybe my my bad. So I will turn off my camera. Okay. So I was I'll be sending just the screen. Don't don't focus on me. I'm I'm just to, I'm just to talk the story here. Okay. Um. Let me know if if it if it helps if you rejoin. I can wait. Okay. Let's wait for Michael to rejoin. Yeah, Michael, rejoin the session, please. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so the very first step is, as I said, ingestion of data. Now, the the new the new paradigm for for the cloud. May I I, I would say it's it may not be new for every customer because some customers used to play with heavy big data, Hadoop clusters, Sparks on premises. Yet for the cloud, it's a very natural way that the data in, data ingestion. Uh, typically ends up with uh, having some cloud storage, object storage, uh, which is a part of data lake deployment. Why I'm saying the, the part of data lake deployment? Because data lake is not just about storage, it's also about some layers that cover data lake. Now, having this uh, storage in, in the cloud, if you, if, you, if you look at how Microsoft implements analytics, how Google implements analytics, and how AWS implements analytics, the patterns, the patterns are the same. So we have this inexpensive, inexpensive object storage based on Web HDFS paradigm, and we store data here, most of the data. And why, why, why is it, uh, why is it uh, so, so? Uh, I would say, good pattern because the first step you need to take is to bring the data to the cloud. Once you, once you decided that you go with this, you know, fast to implement solution in the cloud. The first step is to make sure that you land with land the data in the cloud. Then you can play with this data in many different manners. So once I have the data in the cloud, I can do data integration, so transform the data. Pretty much the same service, the same set, set of services is used for data integra integration. I will show you that in a second. Now then, when you when you have data integrated, typically we want to serve data and organize in a well standardized models like data warehouse or a combination of warehouse and data lake, which is a lake house, right? Right now, the pattern is rather uh, is rather the connection of warehouse and, and data lake. So lake house becomes more and more popular, and I will show you that in a second as well. And then you have different directions where this data can be served. Either from data lake or, or structured relational da database or connection of both, it can go towards data science solutions. So people can people who are data scientists can play with data and pre prepare some predictive models. This can be, of course, BI and reporting. So Power BI business users or developers can consume the models and 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 uh, tables or star schemas or whatever you prepare uh, in Power BI and then produce meaningful semantic models uh, for business users. And those can be also some applications 
some of the some of the organization use data stored within lake houses or warehouses for different purposes like you know master data for organization and, and all this stuff and also this can be a good way uh, to start exchanging the data with uh, external business uh, business partners so any kind of web apis marketplaces can be another direction why i'm saying this because if you look at this picture once again it's a complex beast so you have different blocks uh, uh, fitting into different roles here in this solution. So having this, uh, all those blo all, all those building blocks can lead to silos. Silos may, may exist in different areas. It may start from data. So different people will work with different data, different systems will will provide different different uh, source formats and you know, it's it's hard to predict actually what's what's gonna what's gonna show up. So, for example, we have to deal with relational databases, but uh, at the same time we have to deal with uh, complex and uh, evolving ch change schema changing um, uh, schema changing file formats like JSON coming from uh, different different systems, exchange systems, the systems that are used used to exchange exchange data between organizations um, or our transactional systems as well. Or applications, then technology, um, or, or I would say skills even. So, imagine if you have uh, if you have a complex organization, uh, there is there's there's always a history. People uh, people in one part of organization used to work with SQL. The other the other part of of your team may may used to work with Spark. The same about BI solutions. Some people played with Tableau, and and other part of the company used to used to play with Power BI. How to uh, how to make sure that people can work uh, together, uh, not 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 separate, to, to have the same to have the, the same experience with data and and have data governance in place, right? And the last thing is people. A uh, typical problem of uh, of analytical solutions is to uh, connect IT people with business people. So if you want to, to, to deploy some centralized centralized solution for uh, analytics, there is th there's always a challenge how to involve business people and how to make them engaged from the very beginning moment where, when, whenever you start building the platform. If you don't, then probably over time you, you will quickly discover that, that you spent a lot of money but the business will tell you that there is no value out of out of the system and the data that comes of this analytics. So, again, um, I'm not going to refer anymore because I, I want to quickly skip to demo. But uh, <laughs> this this is this is actually one of the ch the major challenges that we have in the in the uh, analytics, and that's why Microsoft brought the idea of Synapse Analytics, and right now Synapse Analytics and Power BI all together. Um, the purpose of Synapse and Power BI is to make sure that we can create a unified solution for analytics end-to-end -end solution, not having dozens of different services, different platforms, but rather present a single pane of glass where you can control pretty much everything from integration of data, so ingestion and transformation, via uh, exploration of data and preparing your serving layers using different technologies. So. Doesn't matter if you're a friend of SQL Server or if you're a Spark developer, or maybe you come from even even different areas like log analytics and telemetry analytics. You have Data Explorer engine. So there are there are three different, uh, actually actually four different different runtimes that you can use in a single service to analyze your data and to and and to produce some meaningful meaningful outcomes of this analytics. So there are two SQL SQL engines. I will focus on one. On serverless SQL engine today, um, which actually allows you to uh, quickly uh, quickly analyze the data that to bring to your uh, data lake. So data lake will be practically every single time involved. Doesn't matter which runtime you will use, you will you will use data lake storage Gen2 as your primary uh, data lake uh, storage. There is a Spark engine. So you can create Spark clusters and play with notebooks uh, to uh, transform data, analyze data, you do some exploration. I will show you that in, in a demo in a second. And there is Data Explorer, which is for log and, and IoT analytics. I will not cover Data Explorer today, uh, but uh, this, is, this, this is a great engine if you want to 
uh, process billions of rows in a matter of, of seconds, having some strong, uh, strong um, text uh, text indexing. Um, so whatever you deal with with uh, data that comes in a uh, in a uh, often ch often changing data formats like JSON, uh, Data Explorer can be can be the best the best solution. And everything is packed in the same the same platform. Also, we have uh, we have uh, not just data integration that is based on classical ETL or ELT approach where you build some processes that uh, ingest and transform data, but also you have uh, a mechanism called, called Synapse Link, which simplifies the way you can bring the data to your analytical system. And I will show you that also in a second. Everything is covered by layers that have to be provided whenever you build uh, enterprise solution uh, for analytics. So management over your components, over, secu over security, monitoring of everything you do from ingestion to querying the data. So everything is here in a, in a single pane of glass. It doesn't mean that this is closed and encapsulated uh, environment. You can go from data lake to pretty much anywhere. You can go from SQL endpoints to pretty much anywhere because SQL SQL endpoint here is the same SQL endpoint as you know from SQL Server, basically. So pretty much the same connector. Uh, data Lake storage generation tool co in connection with um, uh, with different open file formats like Parquet or, De or Delta can present data to different external platforms like, da like Databricks, for example. So you are not limited to use Synapse as a, as a platform for your analytics, rather you have as you have this central place when you can serve pretty much everything to different solutions. OK, so what I will show you today is the approach that um, that will be based on the assumption that we are building Lake House uh, with Synapse. And um, this is going to be, um, I will do it step by step, showing you some simplified uh, simplified approach and, and some, some simple demos on how you can do do it do step by step uh, step by step discovery of how synapse works and what you can do with this service so first i will show you how to ingest data into the data lake then i will show you uh, how to bring the data using not the the ingestion pipeline but uh, synapse link and i will bring data from dataverse then i will elaborate how you can build your and structure your data lake how you can use Spark to play with the data that uh, comes from uh, one la one layer to another. This is how we how how most people layer the the, la the data lake. So there are layers presenting data like this. Bronze is just a raw data. So you you ingest data to the bronze layer, and and it's and it's it's actually to have the to have the data as it exists in a, in source systems. Silver layer is the curated layer, which means that you you uh, you did a bit of standardization, like uh, like got rid of uh, unnecessary columns, uh, bring the data into expected formats like that, like, like Delta, for example. And the gold one, the gold layer is the serving layer for your data that is well structured, well well standardized, and ready for consumption. For example, by Power BI using different different runtimes, different different engines that you have in Synapse. It can be synapse, synapse serverless SQL pool, or it can be, let's say, more traditional data warehouse. Uh, so synapse dedicated SQL pool, which which provides a, a bit of, a, bit, a bit of more performance if 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 it's required. Now, um, let me let me jump to the demo actually. Um, <laughs> let's start with synapse. Um, now, first, be before I before I go further, let me just uh, quickly show you how you can create uh, synapse to play to start playing with this. The, the the easiest way is to navigate to Azure portal, and then you have your chance to create synapse analytics service, right? So, um, sorry, uh, synapse analytics. There should be some plus. No, there's no. Um, okay. So actually, you can create new. So to create Synapse workspace, you need to provide several attributes. First, Azure subscription. So you have to you have to you have to own your subscription, or you can you have you can start your free trial of Azure. 
Then you 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 have to create resource groups of just logical buckets to store your Azure resources, which is quite quite easy. Then you select your workspace name. This should be unique, and uh, it and then you select region. Region is important because that 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 is the decision where your uh, your Synapse resources will be stored in which in which Azure region. So the typically the best decision is to store the data as close to your location as possible. That makes latency minimal. But the, but the very important stuff with Synapse is that whenever you do, whenever you decide to create Synapse workspace, you have to specify data lake storage generation too. So you have to bring storage that will be mapped to this Synapse workspace, and Synapse workspace will store some data within the storage. This can be also a storage where you will store your data coming to an article platform, but it doesn't have to be stored in this single storage. You may map the, you may map a series of different data lakes, the data lake storages to a single Synapse workspace. I will not create Synapse workspace because I have one already created. So when you have Synapse workspace created, and when you open it in Azure portal, there is a, a button called Open Synapse Studio, which leads to this interface. This is Synapse Studio, web UI that you can use to manage pretty much everything that is in Synapse workspace. So typically you start from this home page and in this home page, I encourage you to start from uh, basic ingestion of data. I will show you that in a second, but also to visit Knowledge Center, where you can find extensive number of uh, sample ga sample gallery. So you can you can find example examples of SQL scripts, notebooks, things that are related to typical typical tasks that you will you will um, uh, proceed with Synapse. So uh, here you can find, for example, sample data sets that you can use to start playing with queries. You don't have to ingest any data. You can find SQL scripts that, that are based on this uh, the, on those open data sets and, uh, for example, use server SQL to query the data. So there, there are lots of examples you can use immediately, but I will start from ingestion of some data. Now, I will use, uh, for the purpose of the ingestion, I will use just one, one single uh, parquet file coming from uh, coming from uh, New York City uh, TLC tree record data. This is an open open source open data set. You can download it um, for your purposes and you can play with it quite easy. So let me ingest the data into my data lake using this ingest ingest button on the home page of Synapse Synapse UI. I will run just once this this copy task. So I will choose copy task. Click next. Uh, I will choose. Um, I will create a new connection, and now you can see the power of uh, of Synapse pipelines. You have over 100 connectors to different different sources. I will use HTTP connector because I'm downloading the the file from website. I will use anonymous uh, authentication type, and the base URL is the, the URL to my file. Right. Now let's test the connection. It's successfully tested, so I can create my connection. So here I'm creating what is called linked service. Uh, so it's it's a connection to external data source, right? Now let's click next. So I have my data source. Notice that uh, I have to decide what's the what's the format of this of this file. Now this is parquet file, right? Then I could preview the data, but um, now let's let's see if the if if the uh, if this wizard can detect schema for me. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, let's 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 pick the destination. The destination will be um, already created uh, a connect connection to my data lake that is under my Synapse workspace. So it's. It's automatically created whenever I have my, my Synapse workspace in place. And then I browse and select my uh, my data like layer, like for example, bronze or sandbox. I will put sandbox as my playing, playing, uh, playing container for data that comes uh, just for a moment. And I will put my newly, my newly copied file into trip small folder right here. Now the file name, 
let me leave the file name as original. So yellow trip data uh, 2022-01. And I guess that's it. So right now I created a pipeline that will execute and will copy the data from external data source and a website to my data lake for my further analysis. Now, notice that I can do several things. I can, I can finish, but I can see also my pipeline in the integrate tab. This is my pipeline. Um, the pipeline executed so I can switch to monitor tab and I can see pipeline runs. So here, here is my pipeline and it, it succeeded. And I can go to the data, data tab and in the linked tab, I can I can check if in my data lake, specifically in sandbox container, if I have my newly created file, newly newly ingested file. As you can see, the file is here, so uh, it landed appropriately. Now, if if needed, I can edit the the pipeline that was created by the wizard. So notice that. The definition of the pipeline that I clicked through using wizard is here and it's and it's actually stored within this this synapse workspace for the for the future use. So for example, I could go and parameterize source and sync and sync if possible if, if, if required uh, to bring more files to my data lake. Now let me switch for a second to uh, another pipeline that I've already created before this session to show you that uh, Pipelines are a great way to uh, to bring to bring more data to your to your Azure Analytics subscriptions and analytics solution. Here I'm using two step uh, two step um, process or uh, pipeline uh, that ingests the data from SQL database in Azure. So I have my SQL database sitting somewhere in Azure. I have uh, I have uh, get SQL table list uh, step activity. That is basically that basically does nothing more but just connects to uh, to predefined connection to my SQL database, and then it it sends a query. I'm not sure whether you see this query, but let me just enlarge it. I hope you know the SQL language, but this is T-SQL uh, that that takes the data from metadata layer in SQL Server and and lists the names and schema names of tables. That fall into schema sales LT. So I have a bunch of table, list of list of table after executing this step. There is a for each step which executes copy table to load each of the tables listed by the first step to my data lake. So the effect of this will be having multiple files in my data lake. How this copy table works? It takes parameterized input from the first step, so schema name and table name of iterated tables, and it's and it syncs and it syncs it to uh, specific specific folders because here in the in the sync data set, if I open it, I have parameterized path when I when I want to where I want to save uh, my ingested data. So imagine this, I have only two steps or maybe three in this pipeline, and I will load a bunch of tables, like dozen of tables, with a single click. So if I now execute this, this will run. So I can actually view the pipeline and just, I, just, as, I, uh, just as I was uh, doing it previously. I can click on the details, I can see that it actually it, it 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 performs different activities. I can even look further into specific activity and see, hey, this copied 128 rows uh, into a file, right, into a data lake. And after after a while, I, it it should be succeeded. So I have I have succeeded. Now, if I go back to my data lake, to data, and explore my um, bronze layer this time. In this uh, in this Azure SQL folder, I have sales LT, and this those are my tables ingested a second ago. You can see, right? 
probably I should refresh it. Yeah. Not sure why the date is all ah, whatever. Anyway, so now you can see that the, you can parameterize the original ingestion pipeline as required to bring more data. This can be complex. This can be th those those tasks can be connected and executed in some orders. So this is for orchestration. I mentioned that there are different ways uh, for um, having uh, for having your data in uh, in Synapse. I mentioned uh, Synapse link. So I have Synapse link. I will configure Synapse link for Dataverse. Dataverse is a storage that is used by Power Platform and D365 applications. So you can actually bring the data from those applications to Synapse quite easily. I will switch to makepowerbapps.com. This is a website where you can manage your applications for Power Platform, for Power Apps. And also you have uh, you have uh, ability to access Dataverse and, and create Synapse link. So I create a Synapse link, uh, which will connect to my Synapse Analytics workspace. Notice that the important thing here is that the region for your uh, for your dataverse environment has to be the same uh, as or or or, or nearby uh, your lo your location of uh, Azure Synapse and the data lake that is used by Synapse. So uh, here I I'm in the same region, East US. So I can choose my subscription, my resource group um, that contains Synapse workspace, and then. It fills automatically with my Synapse workspace and my data lake and allows me to click next. Now I want, for example, to bring a single table, my custom table called vendor, to Azure, Azure Synapse. Notice that here is a small advanced button which allows you to configure things like uh, append only. So you will only uh, you will only copy uh, so copy uh, incoming rows to existing existing uh, table. Uh, and uh, and the way you partition data, I will not pick any of those advanced settings, and I will try to save it just to show you that it it will probably fail because I have already created environment um, that uh, created connection between this specific uh, environment of Power Apps and my Synapse Synapse workspace. As you can see, Lake already exists. So, what's the outcome of this operation? Again, I pointed vendor table in a in in Dataverse, and I pointed my Synapse workspace. If I go back to Synapse workspace, and I go back to Data workspace, when I see my databases, I have a lake database with Dataverse uh, as a prefix of, of the name, and I can see tables here. So now let's let's stop for a second. I've I've ingested a file and I and I loaded some data from Dataverse using Synapse link for Dataverse. How can I explore and use this data in Synapse for Analytics? Let's start with Dataverse because I have it open. I can immediately go and 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 create a SQL script that will be executed by built-in serverless SQL engine to to run and execute on top of my uh, table created automatically. Uh, by uh, configuring Synapse link for Dataverse. So I, I haven't created any kind of pipeline, just connected Dataverse to my Synapse workspace and it pumps the data. Whenever new data comes to Dataverse, it will land here in my table. Even more, this data resides in the specific specific container of my data lake, so I can even query the data that is in the, in the storage. But here I have a table and a, sim and a simple st select statement that can query my data. This table is, is quite wide, so uh, it takes a moment to query it, and it's in the text format, but notice that the data coming from Dataverse is here. Now, remember I brought a single file from uh, a website as well. So let's go to Sandbox, and let's see that on the file, I'll, I can do pretty much the same operation. Select 100 rows, and I can Quickly, quickly, uh, quickly uh, sneak sneak peek the data that is in the file, right? So I can query the data using Server SQL very easily. The data that comes to my storage to my data lake. Now you can go further and you can build some more sophisticated queries 
and you can query different file formats, not just parquet file. This is this is a query that queries series of parquet files. So here you have wildcards. I have several folders, probably gigabytes of data, con containing different years of data, different months of data, and series of parquet file in, in 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 each folder. I will query all that data, and I will show you where the data is stored in in in, in which file using file name file name file name function, and I will show you which year falls into the partition the partitioning wildcard here in the pu year so this is a part of my of my uh, path to the data lake why i'm showing this because once you partition data you can start playing with optimization of how you how much you will pay for your queries i will show you that on the on, the, on this example so ah, apologies um probably something is not right here yeah, all right, all right. Just uh, selected too much text. Okay, so let's go. This uh, this will also take some time because, as I mentioned, this is big data. This is uh, probably 1.5 billion rows. Um, so I'm I'm executing this on pretty much everything. But now, let me show you how how this query goes. So here is my result set. You know, 20, 2009 specific files this file in for this year contains that much that many rows the general number of rows is 1.5 billion so it's a big data now how much i paid for this query if you look at the stats that is that are displayed in the messages you can see that i scanned not that much data right like 81 max and this is because parquet is column store is a column store format so it it doesn't it doesn't need to 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 scan all the all the columns that are that are there in the parquet files only those who are mentioned uh, in the in the uh, in in the in the in the query that you that you're running. So uh, again, partitioning helps a lot because then you can uh, you can do filtering. You can present filters like where uh, results file, file path one equals 2009, for example, and that will query only data from 2009. It will not go into folders that are uh, for different years, right? With CSV, you have different uh, switches. You have to specify format CSV and parser version 2.0. But the good news is that you you actually generate scripts like this, just like you did with just like just, just like I did with the with the parquet files. So I go to CSV files. Let me go navigate to one, one of the CSV files. And I have CSV files here. And I simply go and select top 100 rows. And I don't have to guess what, what, what switches are required for, for CSV format. I simply get the square. And then I can customize it according to my needs. So here in the script uh, I'm using here, I'm, I'm actually querying again the whole set of CSV files to find out in uh, how how much revenue is for each month I, I'm having in this invoices folder. Again, I'm executing a single SQL 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 query. And the same is for JSON. Uh, here I have a single Google Analytics session file which contains some, some data in JSON format about how many visits and hits I had on my website. And I can easily parse this, uh, this uh, Google Analytics file using some uh, JSON functions built in, uh, built in Synapse SQL engines. And I can see that it was Chrome that was the most used browser for, for, from, by users visiting my website. So again, this is a very powerful feature to be able to immediately query data that uh, that you ingested in a data lake. And based on that, you can also create views. So immediately you can cover your data lake using views and create some kind of logical data warehouse. But you can also do different stuff, uh, not just in SQL. So you can also go and create, and go, go for that data exploration using Spark. For Spark, you will not use SQL scripts, but rather you will use notebooks. So with develop with develop hub, you can create different artifacts like SQL scripts or notebooks to play with your data. Here I have notebook. 
which con which consists of, uh, as you can see, descriptions, so documentation, and the code of different languages. So let's go step by step. I will not execute this because you can see the outcome is here. So first, I'm loading the data from a single parquet file and display 10 sample records. I have my data in the data frame, which is a distributed, uh, which is a distributed, um, distributed um, bucket for data that is then um, that is then uh, used by Spark, so distributed uh, compute engine. Then I can transform the data. So once I have data frame, I can, for example, expand my data set by by uh, by splitting date column into several attributes like uh, month number day of month and so and so forth so once i do this once i do this my data set is modified and contains additional columns so it's 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 a part of data engineering stuff right now right then you can go and check the schema of your data frame and also do some analytics like hey let's go and see how many how many uh, how many rows I have I had in the or how many how many uh, activities I had in the in the specific day of month and I can not I can not I can present it not just in table format but also I can switch to chart so of course I would I would have to play with this uh, with the type of this chart uh, for example not sure column column chart or whatever uh, day of month and um, then probably aggregation values count. Okay. Um, hmm. Not sure. Yeah. Not sure why this shows like this, but anyway. Uh, you can also do things like uh, switching languages. So if I have my data in a data frame used by, by Python language, here I'm using Python. I can switch to SQL and I can start playing with SQL and I can see the data that comes out of the SQL query. And then I can use external libraries that I can import into my notebook to produce, for example, some custom visualizations. This is very simple visualization, but, but you can use much more sophisticated stuff. Now, this notebook, as all, as all notebooks, is a great way to uh, to store documentation for, for your experiments or on data, for your data exploration. It can come up as a part of your, you know, presentation, storytelling, whatever. Of course, it's it's not Power BI, so you will probably want to switch to Power BI as soon, sooner or later. But it can be a good way to start with start playing with data, with bigger data than than you could probably load into Power BI. Now. What else I can do? Once I have my data in my bronze layer, I can curate the data. So here is the script that uh, is pretty much uh, similar to what I had uh, with X data exploration. But the purpose of this script is to go to go through the data I have in my bronze layer, and eventually in uh, in my databases loaded from Dataverse, and build some uh, curated data. So for example, I take care about non-consistent payment type column. Uh, I, I'm taking care about, uh, you know, having having data in in a format that I prefer to uh, to land in the in the silver layer that is well prepared to build my star schema. And finally, with another with another notebook, I can build my gold layer. The gold layer will be nothing more but just a bunch of tables, like uh, the dimensions and facts. So. Things that you normally have in in uh, in both Power BI and also in in data warehouses, and I can serve those, those tables using Server SQL. So once I once I save the the tables from Spark Engine, the tables are visible in a data hub in my in my data in my in my lake house or lake database called Taxi Lake House here. So Taxi Lake House, Taxi Lake House. I have my tables here. And now I can also query those data using serverless SQL again. So there is an, there is this interoperability because Spark and serverless SQL can share metadata and you can query the data from Spark tables or Spark created tables using serverless SQL. But even more, you can if you don't want to play with Spark, you can still use only SQL. So here I have a script 
I will not elaborate on everything on the script, but you can use a script just to SQL, if you prefer SQL, to create a new database, then to create objects like views and external tables that connect to your existing data in a data lake. CSV files, Parquet files, Delta files, and it and it presents the 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 uh, serving layer to to users in Power BI. So the method is of your choice, but the 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 major assumption is that you store the data in a data lake. You prepare the data using different techniques, uh, SQL, uh, Spark, whatever, and then you you are good to go and and consume the data with Power BI. The first step people do with in, in Synapse Studio with Power BI is probably to connect to existing uh, Power BI workspace and have insi in insights uh, on the existing data sets and reports in this uh, Power BI workspace. How to connect to Power BI from Synapse workspace? In the Manage tab, you can go and navigate to Link Services, and there you can create a connection to your Power BI to a specific workspace of your organization. So I have a single workspace, nothing to nothing to choose from this. So I could create another connection to the same workspace. I won't do it because I already have this connection here. So when you can and you create this connection in the develop hub, you have Power BI tab and you can even go and, and see the reports that you created in the Power BI workspace. Even more, you can create data sets and and uh, start start from Synapse Synapse user interface to create reports. So here I have my report. I can play with it just like in Power BI portal. Here I have data sets, and I can create a report, newly created report based on this data set. The data sets were prepared using Power BI Desktop and saved to Power BI Workspace, but I can also use it in Synapse UI. Now, because I am running out of time, I hope. I hope you will be able to stay like five minutes longer. <laughs> because now your time. <laughs> we have my time. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay to go like maybe 15, 15 minutes, but uh, I'm, let's just see. So then uh, once you have the data in Synapse and you prepared some serving layer using any technique of your choice, you can do uh, things with Power BI. Power BI comes with several things that you can use on top of big data served by Synapse to make sure that you're able to optimize not just the look and feel of uh, how users play with data, but also the price that is behind this backend uh, in, 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 in Synapse. Because if you know that you will pay for a, for a single query uh, run, in, run by serverless SQL in Synapse, then you will be probably quite careful about how much queries will you, you will send from Power BI to serverless, serverless SQL. So the good news is that most of uh, data sets currently built in Power BI, and I'm telling you that based on the telemetry we have, is, uh, is in import mode. So uh, you can combine different techniques to have both. You have a uh, very quick uh, look, at, look and feel for business users with import mode and direct mode uh, that is that is uh, connecting directly to your uh, to your to your endpoint in 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 Synapse, right? Now, the very first thing, and I will show you that in a second, is aggregations. So you can create aggregations either manually or automatically in Power BI, and then the the, the thing will look like this: if if user accesses aggregated data, which will be most of the queries, then the look and feel will be super fast because that will use import mode. If the user decides to go into details and see some detailed data that is under the hood, then it will it will require sending query to the data source, which will be Synapse, Synapse in this case. Uh, so this is the one. And those aggregations can be also built automatically. I will refer to that in a second, show you where this option is available. Also, you can use uh, things like incremental refresh to load just, uh, as, just the partitions of your data uh, into into the uh, Power BI uh, on an incremental basis, which uh, dramatically can shorten the time of refresh for your data uh, from Synapse to Power BI. And also, you can use incremental refresh in connection with hybrid tables, which uh, which 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 partition data in Power BI 
and each partition can be of different mode. So you can have a mix of partitions with import mode uh, with different with different number of partitions having direct query as, as a mode uh, chosen for that. Now, there is also this feature Power BI Data Mart, which is based on the assumption that I can bring a, a bit of a bit more of a bit more data to uh, to Power BI because behind the scenes I have managed Azure SQL database in in Power BI that will store the data uh, grabbed by Dataflow and serve via dataset uh, to to reports. So this is also a technique that can be used for uh, I would say building a kind of uh, data culture organization so imagine this you have a central store lake house or data lake data lake plus lake house built within synapse and then you serve the data uh, for different different domains or different different uh, departments based on the assumption that people are quite uh, quite uh, i would say um quite uh, independent in how they perform analytics so we rely on the assumption that we, you can build you can build some uh, some number of data sets that are a bit separate from each other but used but used for a purpose of different business processes and then you can use data marts or or data or bigger data sets uh, in power bi or you can still rely on analysis services in azure but I don't think it's it's right now the, the right choice because we decided that Power BI will be a superset of the analysis services, if not now, then very soon. So now what you can do in Power BI, I will show you that very quickly on a report. So here is a report. And um, the very first thing that I have to tell you that is this report is based on the same data I had in my lake house, this New York City Daxi uh, data. And you can see that the number of trips, where trip is represented by a single row of data in Synapse is 1.5 billion. And, and I can interact with this report quite easily. So I probably you might guess that uh, there is there's some there's no magic behind it. There's just uh, a sample use of aggregations. So if you look at the model, the model looks like this. I have three tables, which are my dim dimensions, brought to Power BI using so-called dual mode, which is a which actually uh, leaves Power BI the decision whether it's going to be import mode or, or or direct query. And then I have my uh, fact table, which is direct query table. But then, when I switch to all tables. There is there is one more table existing, which is uh, which is an aggregation table, and this table, as you may guess, is in import mode. So this first tab of my report actually goes to this table and all connected dimensions instead of going through my fact table, which with one one point five billion rows. Of course. I have to prepare this aggregation table, or I have to rely on, on Power BI to prepare the table for me. Here I prepared the table myself, so I will have to refresh the table uh, whenever I want the aggreg aggregates to be actual. But um, it's 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 the right way to to manage the, the situations when you when you deal with big data and you still have to present people with with uh, with good 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 performance, good experience, if they don't ask for detailed data. Now, how to how to how to configure this? Uh, you just configure the aggregations, manage aggregations by right clicking on your fact table. And uh, here is the and here is the configuration for my aggregation table. So I, I, I just decide by which columns in the fact table I'm grouping data and and what kind of summarization or aggregation I'm doing on another on other columns. Okay. And if I if I configure it appropriately, the behavior of report is just like that. Sorry, the the report on the aggregated uh, screen behaves like like expected. It's very quick. If I decide to go down, for example, drill down to specific year. Come on, let's drill down. And let's go to the level of days. And I, for example, want to see, oh, this is the day I want to see in details. So now I'm I'm trying to see the details, including specific trips. And then you can see that this is not that fast. What you can do about it, 
and how you can play with optimization is, for example, use the newly presented optimized tab in Power BI. So I can pause my visuals, I can launch performance analyzer, start recording, and I can uh, analyze single visual that sends that may send, for example, a single SQL query. If I can grab just just a query coming from this single visual and see what's what's be, what's beneath, then I can go and and analyze this like that. This will take a minute or two, so I will not wait for that. Instead, I will switch to Power BI portal and show you one more thing. So let's go to Power BI portal. Uh, here is my uh, workspace when I deployed this the same report and the data set that is be be beneath. So I can go to the settings of this data set. And if I want to rely on Power BI in terms of aggregations, there is a way under scheduled refresh and performance optimization, you have a single switch automatic aggregations training. If you turn it on and save and configure how much you can imp improve your performance and uh, what's the target? Uh, what's the target of your uh, of your um, you know uh, response time? Then you can uh, train and uh, train and refresh uh, this data set based on uh, just based just on Power BI mechanism of aggregation of data. So then you don't have to prepare your aggregates. But again, this will take time. So initially, your your report based on this data set might be slow, but over time it will learn. The patterns of aggregation that uh, that that are used by specific visuals in the report and data and the and, and data set, and uh, it will store store it in cache in Power BI. So over time, the report will be much much faster. So again, there are options that you can use all together from Power BI to play with Synapse, uh, even with big data, as 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 I showed you here, because 1.5 billion is a serious is a serious table. And uh, you can you can actually uh, bring together Power BI and Synapse working quite smoothly. Um, there are there are other mechanisms that you can that you can test as well. Uh, re recently, we announced the public review of Horizontal Fusion, which minimizes the number of queries sent from visuals to direct query sources. So you can also test this one, um, but it's for probably another session. Now, call to action for you. Uh, please remember that uh, Synapse Plus Power BI is is a way to build a unified unified solution for analytics. You can build pretty much everything. You can ingest the data, integrate it, play with data engineering using Spark and SQL, different languages, not just Python, but also Scala and even R. If you have R programmers, then they can build uh, data science solutions. I didn't mention data science workloads, but yes, there are some hidden gems for data science. I would encourage you to take a look at Synapse ML, which is a set of libraries we bring to Synapse to simplify the way uh, data scientists data scientists can work and build their models. We have uh, Custo, so or Data Explorer, so observation and analytics for log and telemetry, and uh, BI, so you can easily integrate Power BI and Synapse, as I showed you. This comes uh, also with uh, close integration with uh, Microsoft Purview, which I also did not cover in this session. Now, call to action, go to aka.ms slash synapse commit resources. That will give you this specific slide with a bunch of resources that you can use to learn synapse, to start quickly, and also to become a member of our community, if you are not so far. I encourage you to join our Synapse Influencers program. This is a, this is a super fun program that you can that you can benefit you can be beneficial in both in several ways. You learn. You amplify the you amplify content on Synapse. You can meet people who play with Synapse a lot, uh, passionates, and 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 of course you can get some swags over time if if you become one of the most active members of the program. But also, uh, I would encourage you to take a look and at learning resources and some samples and accelerators that will speed up your way to learn Synapse. Also, in connection to Power BI. For Power BI, I also have some some links, uh, but um, I don't think uh, you need them. If you're a Power BI passionate and geeks, then probably you know better uh, what's what's new in Power BI and so forth. Uh, notice that today we had an announcement of 2023 Wave One. So this this link here is probably not the, not the most actual, uh, but uh, I didn't act. I, I actually haven't didn't have time to act to uh, to make this this slide. 
um, you know, f more fresh. So call to call to action again, aka.ms slash synapse community resources. Take this, grab the slides and then make make use of those resources. If you have any questions, uh, you can jump to the to, to social media and, and reach out to me. Uh, I, I will I'm, I'm happy to help. Also, in in this in the slide deck, you will grab some links. This Im this image uh, actually leads to a link uh, to end-to-end -end analytics uh, architecture with uh, containing Synapse and Power BI. But also, we have some small business, small and me medium business uh, architecture reference architecture for you. So you can also use those to quickly start deploy some uh, some ba ba basic uh, basic set of uh, so services in Azure and start playing with. Uh, analytical solutions build your own analytics. Um, with that, let me see if I can quickly go and uh, share with you the PDF file that I prepared as an exported version of the slide deck. Probably yes. So let me go and do that. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, Halid, uh, can I can I can I send the deck in the PDF version to you, and then you can share with, with meetup members? Of course. Is that okay? Okay. I will add that file to, to recording. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, um, if you have any questions, that's a, that's the best moment. Apologies for taking more time than expected. Uh, um, I I talk too much. I should probably go a bit quicker to demo, but uh, yeah. It was a pleasure to listen to you because the subject is so broad that we cannot cover everything in detail in such a short period Absolutely. of time. It's, it's impossible. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, the outcomes, rather lake house, focus on open data formats that does not close you just to Synapse. Delta is the preferred one because it provides you with the way of, uh, you know, having AC transactions, being able to provide uh, time travel, so historization of data, um, different stuff. So, so over time, you will see more and more, uh, in more and more improvements and investments from Microsoft from Delta uh, as our primary uh, Delta, our primary data data format in, in Data Lake. And for Power BI, uh, you should pay attention to uh, features that are more enterprise. So, as I showed you, aggregations, hybrid tables, uh, incremental refresh. That those are the things that. Uh, that comes into help whenever you play with not just Synapse but any kind of backend system that that uh, that is that is that is designed to store large volumes of data and provides with uh, enterprise analytics. Hey, thanks okay. for that, Paul. Any, any question from the audience? Please don't be shy. Just unmute yourself and ask your question. I can turn on my camera to maybe encourage you. <laughs> okay, uh, a question from me then. Uh, yeah. Should we expect something in the near future that are not uh, listed in the roadmap? I mean, uh, in terms of using Azure uh, Synapse ecosystem much in a much easier way, e easier way with Power BI. So um, I would say yes, you may expect the details. I will not cover because it's still <laughs> under NDA, and we don't we don't have it in in public in public preview or public roadmap. But you may expect a lot coming in the nearest future. Yes. Um, in the meantime, I would I would focus on I would say uh, what's coming uh, every single month, both to Synapse and Power BI. Both services get updates on a monthly basis, or even sometimes even even more frequently. So pay attention to what's what's going on. Uh, for example, you can see from Power BI, you can see that there is a way to move more towards Power BI Premium, uh, migrate analysis services, as I mentioned, to Power BI Premium. Um, still invest in Power BI being a PowerPoint, PowerPoint for data. So all the good goodies like, you know, uh, speed up uh, your DAX, uh, your DAX uh, writing with some, some intelligence, uh, you know, uh, DAX, from, DAX from speech or something like that, or DAX from text. Uh, so that, those are investments we, we've been doing. Uh, sim probably uh, we, si we also simplify the way uh, the data is being visualized. You notice that you can switch from one visual to another in the portal. 
uh, there, are, there are more things to come over time. And for Synapse, uh, you you probably noticed that there is there are heavy investments in Delta, as I mentioned. Spark 3.3 has been recently announced as uh, our last uh, investment, one of the major ones, which brings Delta 2.1 uh, zero uh, data format 2.10. So actually, you can now do pretty much uh, everything with Delta, like you know, time travel with SQL statements uh, in in Spark, etc. So uh, lots of lots of goodies every single month. If you want to track the if you want to track the news from both sides, and let me go and quickly remind two links. So one is one is this monthly updates for Synapse come under aka.ms Synapse monthly update. Good, good resource. It's a, it's a series of blog posts. Every single month we publish a blog post which summarizes what's new and, and you get links to documentation, samples, everything. And for Power BI, of course, the best source of information is the blog, where every single month you get, a, you get the update, also covered by video presenting new features. But also you may use uh, waves. As I mentioned, there is a new wave for 2023, uh, wave one, semester one. And also you can use Power BI release, release plan. This, this is a report presented by Alex Powers. So uh, great, great way to learn what's what's what happened in Power BI and uh, what's ca what's coming uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming months. So if you track this, then probably nothing will, nothing will be missed. Uh, may I ask a question? Yeah, Was, sure. Sorry, go on. Yeah, my name is Selim. Uh, maybe I missed, but uh, maybe it is a deep uh, question, mm -hmm. but you may share a documentation about it. I wonder when I should use analysis services for Power BI and when I should use so, Synapse, etc. Yeah. So, um, the problem is you have to you have to always leverage uh, between several um, let's say benefits versus caveats. Um, one of the problems with analysis services is that um, analysis services, if you if you decide to go with analysis services, you decide to build your semantic model um, rather using uh, you know mature development. Life cycle, uh, you know, Visual Studio or Tabular Editor, and full blown, full blown development, right? And it's rather, and it's rather good whenever you have bigger models or you plan to have bigger models that still can cannot be uh, cannot be placed in Power BI Premium. If if it's not the case, and it's often not the case because Power BI operates in a different way on uh, how it manages the memory. That is used for the purpose of data sets. Then you should always pick Power BI Premium. And another reason could be because by doing this, you will avoid two things: the cost of analysis services, which typically is high. And if you have both Power BI Premium, because you have large volume of users, and uh, and analysis services, the cost is like doubled, right? So there may be no business justification to have such an expensive BI system. And the second one is the number of copies of data, because if you, whenever you decide to go with analysis services, and for some reason you will also decide to have uh, a portion of the, of the data exported or, or uh, imported from analysis services to Power BI, you will have three copies of data at least. Data Lake or Lakehouse, analysis services and Power BI. I know that we, typically you cover analysis services with uh, direct connection or live connection to to um, to uh, analysis services. So it may not be the case, but even the cost itself can be uh, a significant factor that will stop you from using analysis services. So I would say go and test Power BI Premium. There is a way to test Power BI Premium. Customers can actually ask Microsoft, hey, can we try Power BI Premium? See, see do a POC and, and, and check with POC if your models are going to fit the Power BI premium um, you know capacities and and if you can run your your data sets there if yes then i wouldn't hesitate and go with power bi exactly uh, thank microsoft, you microsoft announced maybe two years ago that power bi yeah. is going to be the super set of analysis service which which means in the long term 
Yes, we, we even got, we even provided the the migration migration tool for analysis services to quickly move to Power BI Premium. So it's happening. We we actually push more and more customers to go from analysis services to Power BI Premium. Uh, even further, we provided, I believe, last month or two months ago, we provided uh, uh, analysis services server properties to Power BI Premium. So now you can even operate on the properties level that is pretty much the same as in in uh, analysis services. Uh, to you know, tweak, 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 and tune some things that you typically do with analysis services. So again, I, I would go and give and give it a try. Run a POC on Power BI Premium instead of uh, in investing in analysis services uh, straightforward. Thank you very hey. much. You're welcome. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Your last chance to ask a question to. One of the most knowledgeable person regarding science. Oh no no no! <laughs> Come on, I just just to remind you, I'm the community guy. There are people, great people in in my product team that help me a lot with understanding how the things work on uh, in Synapse, and I still don't know pretty much everything. So, thank you for not asking tough questions. I'm still I'm I'm constantly learning, just as you. So the resources I showed you today, I'm using them on a regular basis, and I encourage you to do so as well. Okay. Uh, I think we are done with the audience uh, from my question perspective. Uh, Paul, it was a great pleasure to host you. It was a great introduction to Synapse ecosystem. Uh, I, I would be more than happy to see you again, to host you again for a more specific Synapse uh, subjects, topics. Yeah, of course. Uh, we can we can elaborate further. Um, right now I'm, I'm fully packed with presentation, I must <laughs> say, for the for the next couple of months. But hey. Let's see what comes uh, what comes in uh, in you know a couple of months. So maybe we'll be in, we find each, each other in another reality and we'll be discussing uh, totally different perspective on on Synapse and Power BI. Exactly, I have plans for that. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, the recording will be available uh, later on on our YouTube channel. You can check that link uh, on the Meetup page. Thanks for joining. Take care. See you. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Bye.